Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Heads, people, pop culture. Hello everyone, I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs and the host of Vegas Rock Dog Radio. On today's show, I'm talking about fleas, nature programs and liver shunts, so stay right there. Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Hi everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Sam. I'm your host. I'm the queen of rock and roll dogs and this is Vegas Rock Dog Radio. It's a rock and roll show all about pets, people and pop culture. My co-hosts today are, are, I have three of them. I've got Mr. Twix, Miss Thornton, and I've got Mr. Jim back in studio. It's been a while. Yeah, where you been? Uh, where have you been? I don't remember. Why were you tapping on that thing? I wasn't tapping on it. It was smacking me in the nose. Oh. It made a noise. I wonder what was going on there. I don't like a lot of uh, extra noises. I hate this pop filter. I don't. I think I can get away without it. I don't think you can. I think I can. <laughs> well, everyone, Jim hasn't been in studio for a while because he's been touring because he thinks he's fancy. And now he's drinking all my water. So if it's not Mr. Twix drinking all my water, now it's Jim. In fact, can you pass me that? Uh, well, we're really glad you came to the show. Came to the show. Yeah, you came to the show. <laughs> and uh, we've got lots to talk about today. Just tons of things to talk about. Uh, my first thing is how dehydrated I am right now. I feel like the air's dry, even though our temperature dropped, which is great. But it's the best time of year out here. It is beautiful, I have to tell you. Although it was a warm September, usually I really like September. Yeah, it was quite but toasty. But now it's like the last day of September, and it's perfect September weather. It's, uh, I think it's October the 1st, actually. No, tomorrow is October the 1st. Today's September the 30th. Is that right? Yes. I know these things. Oh, I put the wrong date on my show. And, uh, <laughs> so, which means we have 30 days of good weather, and That's then it's it. going to go all wrong. Well, if, well, no, it's not wrong after, it literally is after Halloween. It just, it does go cold, but it's not that cold. Yeah, it's not good. It's it nice. dark. And but that's the only thing I don't like, the dark nights that are very, very early dark nights. Ugh, that's rubbish. I mean, we're getting dark now about half past six, which is too early, if you ask me. But beautiful time of year. If you ever think of coming to Vegas, spring and autumn are amazing times of year. You can still wear a bikini. You can still wear a bikini. You still go hiking. It's fantastic. I get so excited. The dogs love it. And this is a time of year that tons of events start to happen again for us here. So summer, not a lot happens, of course, outside. Too hot. And now all these fantastic events uh, are about to happen. And I'm going to tell you about one that I am hosting uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to tell you where you can connect with us in other places other than listen to the live show. And the live show is the most important thing. Mr. Twix is up on the mic right now. Oh, get He's got wet paws from licking his paws, <sighs> wet side from licking his side, making noise. He's, he's very noisy today. He's just He'll be climbing all over our desks in a second. Dirty wet beard from eating. <laughs> he doesn't care. He doesn't care at all. Oh, uh, is he clunking on? Is he trying to talk into the microphone? He is, but... <laughs> Well, let me tell you where else you can find us. Of course, we have a website, and that is VegasRockDogRadio.com. And uh, you'll see us on Periscope, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Instagram. And, of course, you'll just find us either at VegasRockDog or VegasRockDogRadio. We do have a lot of accounts, but there are main ones. We uh, have a blog, and the blog is TheRockAndRollDog.com. This week, uh, well, this weekend, I plan to write a blog post about this upcoming event 
that I am hosting once again. So I want to be able to tell you in detail what this event is about through the blog. So that's the rockandrolldog.com. We do have an app. In the app, you will go to yap.us, Y-A-P-P dot U-S, and it's free. Download it for free and then download Vegas Rock Dog Radio onto the app. Really easy. Now, of course, if you miss the live show, oh, that would be sad. That would be really sad. <laughs> but you can always catch up with us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spoke, which is the new uh, podcast app from SiriusXM. You can find us on Spreaker and pretty much any other podcast app that you may have on your phone or your iPad or your computer. But you can definitely find us. And we also have a second show, and it's called The Pet Tip of the Day. It's really simple, very, very short, like a micro mini show of uh, literally 30 to 60 seconds tips for pet pet lovers and pet parents. So uh, that's where you can find us, everyone. Find us everywhere. There's no reason to not connect with us. And, of course, we love to see pictures of your pets. Don't be shy. Post them on our page. What's, what's wrong? What are you pulling a face? <laughs> Got stinky dog all over me right now. No, he doesn't care. He doesn't, but... He's just happy doing his thing. So let me tell you about the Pamper Your Pet Day. And it's its, it's fourth annual Pamper Your Pet Day growing... Four e- already. Yeah, it's growing every year. And I've, uh, I turned one year, then I hosted last year, and I'm hosting again this year. So it's, I'm very, very excited. And it's being held by Chapman Chrysler Jeep down at the Valet Auto... Valley Auto Mall. I can't even speak today. Valley Auto Mall in Henderson. So yes, Hendertucky people, we've got an event on our side of town. It's October fourteenth. It's ten to two p.m. It's at the dealership. It's a very nice dealership, and there's so much that goes on at this event. And it's a free event, so you need to know this. It's a free event from ten to two p.m. Loads of vendors, all pet related, all animal related, anything from. Um, yeah, you know, veterinarian services to pet communicators, groomers, you name it, we've got it. And of course, I will have a booth as well, but I am hosting, so I'll be there on the microphone. You know, the hostess with the mostest, you know, keeping the uh, the day running smoothly and letting people know of what's coming up. We'll have a printed schedule on an easel so you'll know, you know, when r- the raffle is going to be drawn, when the Halloween costume competition starts for the pets. And we're going to have food. There'll be um, really good raffles, really good raffles. Adoptions, of course, because we're celebrating National Pet Wellness and also Adopt-A-Dog Day. So, of course, we have to have adoptions. Now, I know for a fact we're going to have the cat people there, the dog people there, and bunny people there with their booths. I do know that the rescues will have dogs. I'm not sure if there'll be cats or bunnies there, but they will be represented. And I think it's the first time we've had rabbits represented. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, as I say, tons of things happening on that day, 10 to 4. The atmosphere is so friendly and fun. I can't even begin to tell you how positive this event feels it's lovely and it is about pampering your pet and that's what you'll be able to do now did you say what food truck they're having this year i don't know there will be a food truck there i'm not sure there's going to be one of our big local radio stations there doing a remote it's just it's just a really exciting event oh and there's a bake sale oh that bake sale does very very well (laughs) and what i want you to do is come over to my booth come and find me let's have a selfie with your pets and Pick up some treats from me. I have treats for everybody. So come on by. And uh, I said, let's have a, a quick selfie. And I want to meet all your pets. Oh, it's just one of the best days ever. I'll be live streaming on Facebook. So make sure you tune in for that. And uh, it's going to be just a really, really fun day, just as it was last year and the year before. And I love to see how much it's grown year by year. But um, and if, don't be worried that it's in a dealership. They're the nicest staff there. If you want to talk about a car, they'll talk to you about a car. But they're not there to, you know, like other traditional oh, dealerships where they just try and <laughs> jump on you. You know, <laughs> you might be just going in to, I don't know, get your car washed. And they go and they, you know, do you want to buy a car? <laughs> no, I'm not like that. Uh, Chapman Chrysler Jeep love animals. I mean, they really love animals. They're supporting a rescue c- rescue community through that bake sale, and uh, they love all their own pets there too. It's really fun, and you'll really, really like like everyone down there. So come on down, October fourteenth, ten to two p.m. Chapman Chrysler Jeep. I'll be there. 
can't wait to see everybody. Can't wait. That costume competition was so good last year. You remember the little Boston Terrier? And it had a, the Boston beans on it. Had a That's the one that won, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it had a jar of Boston beans on its back. We, oh. had, we had a lot of, um, what do they call them? Ewoks. We had a lot of Ewoks. Uh, we had a little dog dressed as uh, uh, with a Mexican sombrero on. Oh, just fun, fun, fun. So plenty of time to get prepared. If you want to make a costume or buy a costume, plenty of time for that. So we'll see you down there at the Camp of Your Bad Day. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, let's talk about, gosh, I mean, we're still seeing, obviously, the effects of Hurricane Harvey and Irma. And uh, now Puerto Rico uh, is affected. And they're then they're in a bad and they're in bad shape. They're in bad shape. And I know a lot of stray animals died. A lot lots of them. There was no shelter for them. No one took them in. It was terrible. And they're in a really tough time. But out of those those um tragedies there are some really incredible stories and some amazing videos. And one of them, I don't know if you saw it, Jim, was um uh, this was the Hurricane Harvey and a dog being reunited with its I didn't see it. with its owner. And oh the nicest the, uh, that dog just loses its mind when it realizes, oh, my gosh, my mom. I, I found my mom. And it was just fantastic. Big dog jumping all over. Just, oh, just really great. But as I say, the effects are still ongoing. So if you do need to uh, and you want to help, uh, money is probably the best thing that you can do right now. The great thing about donating money, and I know it doesn't feel very personal. I don't. I know it doesn't feel like, you know, well, I went to the store and I picked up dog beds and blankets and food. But here's the problem that they've they've had, and that is storage. And uh, if there's no storage, then, you know, stuff goes to waste. And if they don't have good storage where they can keep, you know, rodents away from it, again, that's going to be a problem. And here's the thing. They may have too much of one thing and not enough of another. So as you're donating money, is one of the best things that you can do. I recommend Austin Pets Alive. That's the ones that we've, we've been focusing on. And they need they need that money. And this is a great thing. They use that money. They spend it locally. It stimulates the economy. And that's one of the best things you can ever do for any disaster area that you want to help. So uh, I'll post this video up. It will make you smile. It's one of the better stories coming out of uh, out of the hurricane season. Are there any more hurricanes, Jim? You know, honestly, for the past like week, I haven't even been on the news. I knew there was one that was going up and heading into the Atlantic. I don't know if anything else has been brewing. I, I haven't. I've disengaged from news, and uh, and I've just been really busy. We so. have. I have to say, we've been. I get my life back on the eighth. <laughs> I'm working on a on a reality show. I'm sourcing an audience for a reality show here, British reality show. All these great celebrities I grew up watching on TV as a kid. They're all in Vegas, which is just a dream come true. And they have a fantastic variety performance at the Orleans. And it's uh, I'm sourcing the audience. I'm getting people in there. Tickets are free. So, you know, you know where to find me. I told you all those great places on the Internet. And if you want tickets for, for this amazing show. Uh, yeah, if anybody's going to be in town, yeah. It's really exciting. So, But I, I'm saying I get my life back on the 8th, and that's the day after the show. <laughs> been a lot of fun met some amazing people what incredible crew and met some of the celebrities yesterday and that was really really special for me so very exciting it's called last laugh in vegas so if you do want tickets just let me know i can help you out with that well jim i tell you what let's take a quick break because we've got um, some fun stuff to talk about some training things some uh, natural remedies you can create we're talking about liver shunts you know um we're covering it quite a bit during this show. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. And I'm Sam, your host. We'll be right back, people. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. At Carl's Jr., not only do we make you happy with our delicious charbroiled burgers, we also make your dogs happy. Come through our drive through with your furry friends and we'll offer them a treat. We'd love to see their smiling faces. Our website, CarlsJuniorOfLasVegas.com, has a treat in store for its customers too. With free coupons anytime, so visit us often. Carl's Jr. is a proud and active supporter of animal adoption in our community. You can find us at CarlsJuniorOfLasVegas.com. Pet Scene Magazine is dedicated to Las Vegas pets and the people who love them. 
It's a source of news and information for pet lovers, as well as offering valuable coupons and specials on pet products and services. Find them online at www.lvpetscene.com or look for them on Facebook. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Hello, everyone. I'm glad you stuck around. We've got lots to talk about. If you're just listening in for the first time, just tuning in, as we say, uh, welcome to the show. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. I'm Sam. I'm your host, and we cover every topic you can imagine when it comes to animals, whether it's wild or domesticated, uh, whether it's an ant or an elephant or an elephant. <laughs> yeah, I've got lots to cover today. Let's talk about, and we, we've, we've used this training technique, it's called the touch technique. Mr. Twix is good at it. He's very good at it. We used the touch technique for Mr. Twix because he was not used to people or other animals at all. And he didn't like that. And he, he he's still not a fan of anyone coming up to him, in all honesty. But we wanted to get him a little bit more comfortable with people coming closer to him. And uh, the touch technique is fantastic. Now, you can use the touch technique with a clicker or you can use the word, you're going to use the word touch anyway, or you can use treats and, of course, lots and lots of praise. And basically, what I did was I would put my hand in front of him and the minute his nose touched my hand and I would say touch and he would touch my hand, I would praise him, give him a treat. You can do it with the clicker. And the minute they touch, you click, you give him a little treat or you give him lots of praise. And so what this got him used to was my hand coming towards him. And I would do it in different directions, you know, above his head, you know, be, you know, behind his back. He'd turn around and he'd touch my hand with his nose. And he got used to doing this touch thing where, oh, a hand came near me. I'm comfortable. I'm okay with that because he associated it with praise and treats. And so it worked very, very, very well. Now, it can be very good for dogs who are shy, uh, very good for dogs who are scared. And just make sure that when, when you do this training, and I think this goes with any kind of training that you do, is not to overwhelm your dog with either too long of a training ses session or too rapid fire, too intense. You know, if you feel like they're not getting it, they need to take a little break, slow down. But touch is used for so many things. I say we use it to make him get used to anyone's hands coming near his face and um, from any direction because you never know when someone's going to try and pet, pet your dog and your dog doesn't see them coming. And also they've used it with, um, what do they call it, uh, you know, recall. They've used it to get your dog's attention, you know, if you need to get your dog's attention. And it's used a lot with, you know, some of those fun training things. You know, people will get the dogs to walk between their legs and stuff. And touch is great because your hand's right there and you can put your hand where you need your dog to be. And it works. It's great. He was good with commands on leash today. We were around a lot of people in the park this good. morning. And uh, his weight command is on point. Is it? If I say that, he stops and, and just looks right at me like, what's going on? What's going on? The I'm other one attention. is like, really? I have to wait for you now? I want to sniff more things. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's something I think you also have to think about. I mean, this is not a training thing. But when you walk your dogs, I do know lots of people that get annoyed when their dogs stop to sniff and that's part that's part of them using all their senses so you don't want to stifle that and then they see people like yank them come on what are we waiting for let them explore they're using all their senses that that makes them happy uh, trust me they get to be a dog and i think that's very very important and uh, twix is definitely a um a sniffer and a, a dog that likes to discover things although he it's goes if Thornton goes somewhere and she leaves a little uh, wee mark, he's like, mm, why did she mark that spot? Let me <laughs> check it out. And then he goes, mm, I'll mark it too. <laughs> he follows her lead for marking. <laughs> he does. But yeah, the touch, the touch technique, so useful, so easy, so positive, so simple. It works. Wonderful. I will put this link up as a video for you to help you out with that. So you can see all the many ways in which you can use it and how it can benefit your your dog and how you can communicate better with your dog as well and that's that's what we all want the the better the communication uh, the, the, the happier everybody is it's great well let's talk about fleas oh we don't have fleas here we are so lucky 
you don't have fleas, you rarely see a mosquito. And so, but there are, I do actually feel bad for people who have to deal with fleas on a, on, on a regular basis. It's horrible. But as we've talked about before, a lot of these flea and ticks, well, not a lot. Anything that's got chemicals in it, not good for your pets. Chrysanthemum. Derivatives. Remember we talked about chrysanthemum flowers when we talked about pet pest control for your home? And it's the same thing that goes into flea and tick as well. It's toxic. What it is is a... What's the word, Jim? Uh, it's a... Poison? No. Toxin? No. What do they call it? Not fertilizer. It's a... Mm, uh, insecticide. Yes. That's right, an insecticide. So you put an insecticide on your pets, and they do c- can give chemical burns, can cause seizures. Uh, it's dreadful, 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 dreadful. So people are asking, well, what do I do? What do I do if my pet gets fleas? I mean, how am I going to control this? And and I found, actually, on Healthy Holistic Living website, I found this article. And the first thing was, you know, I, I'm, uh, it's a homemade flea powder, and I didn't have to use any toxic chemicals. Yay! Bonus, this flea powder also works at repelling and killing ticks, flies, mosquitoes, ants, spiders, and other bugs. And I said, this is awesome stuff. And it says, uh, note, if you want to make this recipe for yourself, you can buy Buck Mountain Parasite Dust here. There you go. Um, And uh, the person that wrote this article said, I base my homemade flea powder off this product, but it is much more cost-effective to make it yourself, especially if you have a flea infestation because you're going to need a lot of it. Oh, I cannot imagine if you had a flea infestation. Oh, my goodness. I had one when I lived in Spain. Oh, mm. I can't. Inside or outside? Inside and outside. I can't even begin to tell you what a living nightmare that was. I mean, a living nightmare. But there's nothing better than, you know, if you can make it yourself, you know what's in it. And and what this person did is they consulted with a holistic veterinarian. And that's a really good thing too. So um let's let's tell you how it how it work well, how it works, what you need and the benefits of it. And here's your ingredient list and the benefits of homemade flea powder. This homemade flea powder is composed of diatom flour, neem powder, and yarrow powder. And all the ingredients are traditionally used in very effective insect repellents and recommended by many holistic vets as a successful flea and insect killer and repellent. Where's that Mr. Twix? He's making so much noise today. He's out of control today. Oh, my. He won't stop. He uh, got mad at me when I tried to hold him. Oh, what? Oh, you didn't want to be on your no, knee? No, he didn't. <laughs> He's not having any of that today. The beauty of having a dog show, pet show, <laughs> and pets. So he, he Stuff got, happens. <laughs> got very cantankerous when I tried to s- make him settle. Oh, he's got quite, quite the little personality. Uh, so back to the ingredients. Food-grade diatom flour. It's also called diatomaceous earth, or DE. We've talked about this before. Ground prehistoric seashells. That's correct. Seashells. It's a diatomaceous earth <laughs> is a soft powder made up of fossilized remains of tiny, tiny aquatic organisms called diatoms. Their skeletons are made of a natural substance called silica. Under a microscope, DE is very sharp, allowing it to puncture the exoskeletal skeleton of insects and causing them death by dehydration. Uh, Diatomaceous earth kills insects by physical action, not chemical action. That's important to know. It's important to note that DE particles are so small, so it just feels like fine, fine baby powder to humans and pets. And it's, a, it's, a, it's simply a mineral silica. And it's food grade. Freshwater DE is harmless to humans and pets. And so uh, if you want to see a little bit more of that, there's actually a food, there's a food safety note at the end that we're going to mention. Neem powder. Have you ever heard of that, Jim? Nope. Neem is a herb. Uh, somebody they wrote an herb. No, it's not an herb. It's a herb. With a H. That's herb. debated. No. In the English language. It doesn't you can't it doesn't you can't say it properly. Neem is a herb. Herb. <laughs> How'd you say it? Herb. Oh, it's horrible. There's a H there, my friends. Neem is a herb used in Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah. I have to get off the microphone here for a second and deal with this dog. <laughs> I think he needs a bone. He instead of instead of licking his paws, he needs a little bone to to entertain himself with. Oh my goodness, he's something else. He's so f- Oh, he's something else. Oh. 
Oh, so, <laughs> so I, I'm easily distracted by dogs. It's easily done. I'm sure you're all, all, all the same way with your pets as well. Um, go find him a bone, Jim. He has a bone lurking around somewhere that keep him busy. I know. He's been a little bit obsessed with licking this week. We're trying to get to the bottom of it, and we're not quite sure what it is. We do know. We actually have a feeling it could be our palm trees because twice a year our palm trees drop hundreds of thousands of these little seeds and they're everywhere, and you're constantly cleaning them up. And I'm wondering if... Well, they're both a little bit itchy this week. I wonder if, if they're affecting them. So, but he's got a bone. Let's try and get him on a bone as opposed to his little feet. Bless him. Um, so, where was I? <laughs> Neem. A herb used in Ayurvedic medicine. And it's been used for centuries as a very effective herbal insect repellent. Repelling fleas, ticks, lice, mites, ants, and mosquitoes. Neem has a few natural active ingredients that make it so effective. For example, the compound in neem... As a dirachin, dirachin. Oh, you are with your words again. As a dirachin, at least I try them. Is that all. a country? No. As a dirachin. Ba- yeah, like Azerbaijan. No, uh, it disrupts the metamorphosis of insect larvae. So, by inhibiting molting, by yeah, inhibiting, that's Twix. by inhibiting molting, neem keeps the larvae from developing, and they die without producing a new generation. <laughs> Can you hear that going on? Now we've got a bone rattling around the studio. Oh my god! Let's get him on the carpet. <laughs> you know they say don't work with animals and 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 kids. I say work with animals because it's always funny. It's always fun. <laughs> so this as a derachtin is so repulsive to insects that they would rather starve to death than touch anything with traces of neem. Oh, wow. Another neem compound is called solanin, and it's equally as effective of a repellent. In a few studies, it has even been proven even more effective as repelling biting insects than those repellents containing the chemical concoction of DEET. Neem also has many moisturizing properties and helps get rid of excess dryness and scaling, and it helps soothe irritated skin, and the antibacterial properties of neem prevent development of any further skin infection. And because diatomaceous earth can be very dry, neem helps protect uh, your pet from excess dry skin, so it's going to counteract that. Now, yarrow is in there. Can you eat yarrow? Yeah. I think it's in recipes. It's a herb, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yarrow's most ancient use and most famous use is in herbal medicines in the world, and it's a natural wound healer. It's also considered a sacred herb by many cultures around the world because of its healing ability. And yarrow is a wonderful anti-inflammatory for the skin conditions and soothes irritated skin. It is also antimicrobial and has pain relieving properties there's lots to it that's great because pets with fleas tend to get secondary infections and that's true from flea bites yarrow protects your pet from those secondary infections and also helps soothe red irritated skins so all those ingredients have a very good purpose put together makes absolute sense to me uh, here's how the, the recipe works really easy a cup of uh, food grade food grade diatomaceous earth Half a cup of neem powder and half a cup of yarrow powder. That's it. You're going to mix all your ingredients together. Put in a shaker top container. You know, like the ones you would use, like um, when you shake... Um, Grated cheese. Yeah. Or, um, yeah. Or icing sugar. Yeah. Mm, so, um, powdered, powdered sugar. She used a mason jar with a shaker top lid. And she um, oh, <laughs> she got hers from the Christmas tree shop. I know you can get them from Michael's, though. You can definitely get them from Michael's. She says, oh, you could build your own and drill some holes in it. But uh, you definitely can buy them. And they're cheap. And you can apply from head to tail along your pet's spine in dry conditions. Brush your pet's fur going the opposite direction so the powder comes in contact with the skin. Avoid their eyes and nose, of course, and uh, rub the powder on the belly and the legs and try to get the flea powder on as much skin as possible. I have found, she said, that brushing the fur in the opposite direction and applying the flea powder with a cosmetic puff, ooh, works very well. Also found that the fleas seem to like the tail and the area right above the tail and the belly groin area. So make sure you pay extra attention to those areas. Get them well covered. Don't miss any. And how often do you have to do this? How often do you think you would have to do this, Jim? Once a week. Well, she says to use this as a general repellent 
So this would be anyone that lives in you know states like California that normally would do something monthly, um, where they don't have a serious flea infection. That's not what the infection infestation that they're dealing with. You can apply once a month hmm. during active flea season, which is end of spring slash summer. There you go, and that's sufficient, she says. And if the pet gets a bath or gets wet, it will need to be reapplied. So of course that's going to be washed away. So what do you do if you have a flea infestation? <laughs> Shudder. Uh, you'll need to apply it more often, depending on how bad of an infestation it is. And uh, apply it every other day until you see no more traces of fleas. And uh, and then you'll use it as maintenance beyond that. So some are s- some people are successful with applying as, l- as little as once a week, but others need it more often. It just depends on that level. Also remember to reapply if your pet gets wet. And that's important. You want to make sure they're still protected until you've got rid of that infestation. And you will also need to apply this flea powder to your floors, your window sills, your door sills, your pet bedding, your sofa, <laughs> your whole house, your whole house. And focus your efforts where your pen spends most of their pet spends most of their time, of course, since fleas and the eggs will be most concentrated in those areas. Just apply light dusting to the areas of your house and leave it there overnight. Vacuum in the morning or sometime the next day. Do this once a week for four weeks if you have an infestation. You don't need that. It's horrible, isn't it? And she says it works amazingly well, but it will not work overnight if you have a flea infestation. So you've got to be a bit diligent about applying it to your pet and applying the powder to your home and vacuuming at least once per week for four weeks in a row to get rid of an infestation. So you just have to have a little system in place there and just follow that schedule. And you can even use it in your yard to repel and kill fleas, ticks, spiders, ants, mosquitoes. Great, because then now you're not spraying toxic chemicals. Can we use that for the kind of bugs we have? I don't know, Jim. I mean, we don't have fleas and we don't have spiders. I did see some ants yesterday. Of cucarachas, millipedes, centipedes, yeah. ants. It might be worth trying. And we could put some around the back wall. Yeah, I mean, as it is, we don't use a tox- toxic, um, toxic solution anyway. We use a... a, a uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say natural because uh, chrysanthemum flowers are natural and that's what's in the toxic uh, pest control solutions that they use. So uh, we we just know we c- what we're using is safe, very, very safe. There's no, no chemicals in it whatsoever. Um, she says she also leaves a little bit of flea powder in her door and window sills to prevent spiders, ants and other bugs from entering. So I'm not sure exactly w- what area of the country that is. As I say, a lot of those things we don't have to deal with. We don't have ticks either. Yay. But no one wants to deal with that. (laughs) No one wants to deal with that. Um, So there you go. I'll put that link up on our social media. And you'll be able to find those links. And if it saves you some some money and it works and it's healthier for your pets and you, great. Do it. Absolutely. I think we're all going down that path anyway. We're, We're starting to read so much more and questioning saying, you know, is it healthy? Uh, And a couple of, well, a few shows back, I did a show on pest control. And I did my own research. And I made lots of calls and emails and that kind of thing. And um, no one would disclose to me what was in their their sprays. Still never got back to you. No. And I contacted a lot of people. A couple did come back and say, oh, I assure you it's safe for you and your pets. And I said, yeah, but what's in it? I need to know. I want to be able to research that to make sure it is truly safe for me and my pets. And you know what? It's not. But the buzzword is natural. And when they say, oh, chrysanthemum, you know, flowers are in it, it's natural. That's the to- one of the toxic ingredients. So you can, we can all be fooled by natural, but anybody can be harmed by something that's natural. Anybody and their pets also. So there you go. And a friend, was ex- uh, she was sharing with me the other week that every time her neighbor had pest control come over, her dog had a seizure. Did you know that? We talked about that a couple weeks ago uh, when you did the, uh, that was mentioned in the. So she in, noticed, yeah. she noticed that. And so the she would try residual. and keep. Residual. She would try and keep, yeah, try and keep all the dogs inside, all the pets inside when pest control man showed up. But it also affected um, someone else's fish. Fish? Well, yeah, because it goes up in the air, Jim. Mm. It goes up in the air. Um, they're just spraying it everywhere and it did it uh, contaminated their water and yeah not good and it doesn't break down so that's why it lasts a month because it's still there so you don't want you don't want that for you and you don't want that for your pets you don't want to walk on it with your bare feet they don't need to be on it with their paws and licking their paws no but you can walk on diatomaceous earth you can walk on diatomaceous earth (laughs) on the earth well let's talk about the truth about cancer 
cancer is on the rise in pets. And, and we want to know why and we want to stop it. And so the truth about cancer live is uh, going to be doing a presentation. And it's uh, this is what they wrote here. So this is something that you can tune into. Dear Cancer Fighter, our, our mission here at TTAC, which is the truth about cancer, is to educate people, expose the truth, and eradicate cancer from the face of the planet. Now, this is not just for people. This is for people, people and pets. Uh, we're working every day to bring you the latest science and information you need. Information you might never hear about otherwise. Last year's event was profoundly special. They said the response, the emotion, and the stories of healing were truly overwhelming. We talk a lot about how to heal your body, detoxify, and get things working properly again. But really, our mission is all about saving lives, plain and simple. You can read books from renowned experts. Is this picking up his his bone chewing? Is that picking up on the mic? No, I turn my mic on and off based on his noise <laughs> levels right now. He's going to we are going to hear a little bit of him today. He is very but I'm glad adamant about how he's doing things I'm today. I'm so glad he's not licking his paws. <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, so they said you can read books from renowned experts, watch their documentaries, listen to their interviews and podcasts, but there's no substitute for meeting face-to-face -face with these people and asking your questions about your personal situation. And that's why the whole health industry is buzzing about this year's event. But here's the great thing. They're gathering the best of the best. 40 of the smartest, most innovative health and wellness experts in the world for a special three-day event in Orlando. And that's Orlando, Florida, October 5th through the 7th. So that's next week. Here are the people that are going to be on there. Dr. Merkla, Rodney Habib. Dr. Merkla is the best. We talk about Rodney Habib all the time as well. Dr. Karen Becker. We, we quote a lot of her in, in this show. Dr. Rashid Buttar, Dr. Stan Burinsky, Dr. Tony Jimenez, Doug Kaufman, Sherry, the juice lady, Calbom, and many, many more. They're going to gather in one place at one event with the sole purpose of teaching you how they're eradicating cancer and other top diseases. So uh, Rodney, Dr. Merkula, and uh, Dr. Karen Becker. They're, they're your pet people. They're your pet people. So this is brilliant that they've been included in this because the parallels are the same. The parallels treatments can often be the same, and uh, they've, they, they're going to talk about some really great stuff. It's, it's going to be exciting, and it's the health event of the year, and it's called Truth About Cancer Live, and they want you there. So what you'll do is you'll go over to their website, and it'll be thetruthaboutcancerlive.com, and you'll be able to find the 2017 event. It's next week. I think there'll be some incredible things that come out. What I love about Rodney, what I love about Dr. Karen Becker, they're speaking out against, well, she's a veterinarian. She's speaking out against her own prof profession when we don't do the right things for our pets, particularly with nutrition. And Rodney is doing the same thing, and he's not scared. He goes up against the big pet food uh, the big pet food industry and uh, you know that can be a scary thing he goes up against them because he doesn't think it's right with the, the type of foods that are going out there and the lack of disclosure on on labeling and uh, not so much truth in the advertising so I, I, I love that he, he goes up against that they've been doing some exciting things and um, I wish we could be there. I cannot be, unfortunately, but I, that's something I would definitely want to attend. Now, I think they're going to stream it live, so that's why you would hop over to the thetruthaboutcancerlive.com. And if that's the case, sign up, sign up, sign up, and watch it because uh, these are the people that are bringing you the truth and um, rem uh, you know remedies and treatments and, and what you can do for yourself and your pets when it comes to cancer. It's a really good thing. Well, we finally made it to liver. <laughs> We finally made it to the liver. And since we're talking about Dr. Karen Becker, this is, I learned this from Dr. Karen Becker about the uh, liver shunts. Now, you probably heard it. You heard the word liver shunt, but do you know what this is? I have no idea. I know what a shunt is. Or right. is that a stent? <coughs> Excuse me. Is a shunt this like is a, a shunt. stent? I don't know, actually. Well, we're going to find out, <laughs> as most of you are aware. So this is Dr. Karen Becker's article. Uh, she says the liver is an amazing organ. Well, we do know that ourselves. We just had a friend who had a liver transplant. And because of his blood type and the condition he was in, within two weeks he did get a donor. And that's a wonderful thing. And we're so glad that Big Daddy is doing really, really well and um, uh, making a miraculous c recovery. But it is an amazing organ. It can regrow. Is that correct, Jim? It does. It regenerates. Isn't that incredible? 
and uh, it performs a, um, a lot of important functions for the body and here are some of those things it's uh, a big giant filter and it removes bloodborne toxins it synthesizes and distributes proteins for use by the body it stores sugar in the form of glycogen and uh, she says the liver is just a phenomenal uh, organ and it requires a consistent flow of blood to and through it to do its job properly. Now, the presence of a liver shunt in your pet means that the blood flow to and, th and through the liver is compromised. So that's the shunt itself. There are two primary types of liver shunts. Intrahep intrahep intrahepatic, which is inside the liver, and extrahepatic, outside the liver. Liver shunts are typically a problem of dogs, though cats can also have this condition. And so how does this even happen? How does it develop? And so the, the shunt uh, is called the ductus venosus, and it's actually a natural development while a puppy is growing inside the mother's uterus. Interestingly, she says, during gestation, puppies' livers aren't functional. Hmm. Whoa. They use the mother's liver. Yeah, the mother's liver carries the detoxification burden for her body and her entire litter while in utero. You learn something new every day. Towards the end of gestation, the ductus venosus is supposed to close, ensuring that the puppy's liver is then fully functional at birth. And if the shunt doesn't seal itself off before birth, the puppy is born with an open shunt called the patent ductus venosus, which is an intrahepatic shunt. Yeah? That's a lot of words. Yeah, I'm getting them all right, too. <laughs> uh, an extra an extra hepatic liver shunt is a genetic anomaly in which the blood flow to the liver is rerouted by an abnormal blood vessel outside the organ. So that's how that happens. And uh, this type of shunt also develops in utero. Even though the ductus venosus closes as it should prior to birth, the shunt outside the liver remains open and it compromi compromises, compromises, compromises that blood flow to and through the liver. So what are the signs? What are you going to look for if you think something's going on with the, with the liver? And the symptoms of the presence of a liver shunt are also symptoms of a poorly or non-functioning liver. And the liver's job is to distribute that protein so the puppy can grow and also detoxify the blood. A puppy with a shunt will show signs of toxosis, no, toxicosis, sorry, from central nervous system depression. And so some of these sim symptoms are stupor, vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy. Now, oh, those can be related to many things, can't they? It sounds like a lot of things. Yeah. In very serious cases, toxins in the blood cross the blood-brain barrier, resulting in seizures and other significant central nervous system um, crisis. So another sign of the presence of a liver shunt is a, f is a failure to just thrive. And a puppy that isn't thriving will have a lack of physical growth and poor muscle tone, and th they'll sleep a lot and will generally be lethargic and underdeveloped compared to the litter mate. So that's something to look for. Larger dogs are more prone to the intrahepatic, which is that inside the liver shunts, including these breeds, which is your Australian cattle dogs, Labrador retrievers, Australian shepherds, Old English sheepdogs, Samoyeds, and uh, the shunts outside the liver, extrahepatic shunts, occur more commonly in small dog breeds. Yorkshire Terriers are at the top of the list. And some of those other breeds are Maltese, Dachshunds, uh, Jack Russell Terriers, Shih Tzus, Las Apso, Cairn Terriers, Poodles. And uh, you, you have to diagnose this through blood work. And it, it can be a bit difficult, they said, you know, because that failure to thrive in puppies is a tip-off that often in milder cases, th they're not just not clear-cut signs. You know, people might just go, oh, I just got a tired puppy or, you know, they're the small one. So um, so blood test results that can point to the condition include a low bun, and that is a blood urea nitrogen level bun, mm. which is a measure of kidney function. And another tip-off is low albumin, and that's a type of circulating Protein. I learned about this in school. <laughs> Albumin. We learned about that because that's part of the egg. It's yeah, part of eggs. That's, that's right, <laughs> which you had for breakfast this morning. Uh, liver enzymes such as ALT and AST might be elevated and indicating damage to the organ. The best measure of traditional blood work of a possible liver shunt is a liver function test called the bile uh, called bile acids. And bile acids are produced naturally by the liver and are stored in the gallbladder. They are secreted as necessary by the gallbladder to help your, your pet's body process fat. They're then absorbed through the small intestine and they're recycled back to the liver. 
So if the liver doesn't have this blood flow that it needs to recycle bile acids, the levels will be high in blood work. So that's that's a clue to the, to the you know the test and diagnosis. And normal bile acid values are under twenty, and uh, some of these levels can go over hundred, and can give you a very good clue that your dog is suffering with a liver shunt. Mm. Um, now, she has her hospital is called Natural Pet Animal Hospital. It's Dr. Karen Becker's hospital. And they do require a pre-anesthesia blood work on every pet. So she encourages you to insist your vet do the same. Many dogs are spayed or neutered at six months of age. And many vets don't do pre-surgery blood work to check organ function on animals that are young. I've always said, do the blood work. Always do the blood work. I know that uh, it, a lot of veterinarians offer it as an option. To, I would never look at that as an option. Just so you know, just say, I'm going to be playing paying for blood work because that it gives you a really well, good picture yeah, of their health. Yeah, and it gives them the idea of this is what my dog's chemistry looks like if yeah. I have to give it anesthesia or drugs. Yeah, and, and especially on young dogs, you'll get a really good read on what's going on with those organs. And she said, you know, it can be a, a rude awakening, you know, to the presence of a liver shunt when it takes your beloved pup two or three times as long as it should to come around from anesthesia. Or worst case scenario, it doesn't survive the experience. So the liver is the organ that has to process um, anesthetizing drugs. And if it doesn't have adequate blood flow, yeah, this all makes sense. Your pet's body can't efficiently manage those drugs. So do your blood work for many reasons. But that's a very good reason to do that. She's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate way to discover that your pet has a liver shunt. Uh, pre-anesthesia pre blood work is a proactive and, and definitely a much safer way to go. And whether your pet is a your pet is a puppy undergoing anesthesia for the first time or an adult dog, she does recommend annual blood tests to ensure liver function is adequate to handle anesthesia and other drugs. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with everything. Um, additional diagnostic testing. And she said the only definitive method of diagnosing this this liver shunt is to determine whether it's intra or extra hepatic is through an NMRI CT scan. And uh, portography, which is a test that looks at blood flow to and through the liver, ultrasound, and exploratory surgery. So there are there's quite a few tests there. She only recommends you spend the extra money for those tests if your pet's quality of life is clearly compromised. And if your puppy is having a central nervous system problem uh, or is failing to develop normally, you may have no choice but to consider these diagnostic tests. She says it's especially true if your pet's quality of life continues to unravel and you're faced with the possibility of euthanasia. That's the last thing you want to do. So the diagnostic test that she mentioned um, will show your veterinarian exactly what the problem is. And then you can consider the possibility of a surgical solution. So there is a surgical solution to this. And it is the best option, she says, for many shunt liver shunt cases. Unfortunately, intrahepatic shunts have a less successful prognosis than shunts outside the liver and um, intraheptic shunts are difficult to correct uh, surgically and have more post-surgical secondary complications the extra hepatic shunts usually are easily fixed with surgery and could be your, pe your pet's best option do people get these same problems people yeah i don't know hmm. i don't know interesting hmm. interesting dilemma maybe we'll have to check on that um medical management of a liver shunt is if they have been diagnosed and, and you're being proactive with your with your blood work and they seem you know your pet seems to be healthy and fine the things you can do she says to manage that blood flow impairment and that includes nutraceuticals and herbal compounds that aid detoxification so sam e you'll have seen seen that in uh, like whole foods those kind of places um uh, uh, settle l carnitine milk thistle dandelion and there are also, she says, some very helpful homeopathic and Chinese herbal medications that help with that detoxification of the blood. And she said, you know, rec she recommends finding a holistic, integrated veterinarian who can tailor a supplement program to meet your dog's needs. And uh, I do, I, I echo that. We have uh, that e exact kind of veterinarian, and um, they they do so much more than the, the general prescribing uh, of treatments and drugs. Um, she says another uh, important aspect, of course, is going to be nutrition therapy, good nutrition. Your dog, as a carnivore, must eat protein for his well-being, definitely. And since meat. liver, meat, since the organ which processes proteins impaired, it's necessary to reduce, pro it, to reduce protein intake. Um, it's important to understand that you don't want to entirely eliminate protein from a carnivore's diet. It's the processing that's the issue. This is the yeah. issue. Or your dog will develop serious health problems related to hypoproteinemia. And that's a protein deficiency. So this is a, bal this is a balancing act. But you do want to feed, she says, a reduced amount. 
And we talked about a few weeks ago about the prebiotic and the probiotic benefits as well for mm-hmm. the digestion. Yeah, to help aid in digestion, absolutely. And my, my favorite uh, rapper, nutrition rapper, <laughs> Maccabee, always talks about digestion, yeah. and foods and digestion. Check him out, Maccabee. You'll love him. He's so good. He wants to learn about nutrition in a really fun reggae rap kind of way. <laughs> then you're going to go and find Maccabee. He's so good. Um Dogs with uh, liver shunt should only be fed uh, a very high quality protein. It's got to be human grade, uh, small amount uh, than you would normally feed. It's got to be clean, it's got to be organic. Raw is best, she says, to maintain the foundation health of a dog with a liver shunt. So again, nutrition, it just plays such a big part in, in overall health of your pets. Uh, she does get frustrated, she says, with commercially available diets for dogs with liver conditions. Um, is that while they do contain a low percentage of protein, the quality of that protein, she says, is terrible. And so this is why, this is why, this is what I said about her. She she will speak up against these uh, these pet food companies and her own profession if she feels like they're not doing the right thing in, in doing the best thing we can for our pets. Uh, she said it's from rendered meat, not human grade. And she says it's very hard for your dog to digest and it has minimal bioavailable availability because it's just poor quality. So don't be fooled by the the uh, some of these commercial pet foods. If you can, um, you know, work it out where you can do your particularly a raw diet, it's going to do really, really, really well. And you know exactly what you're feeding your pets. Uh, she does recommend for a hepatic impairment, a homemade diet. And she said, partner with a pet nutritionist. She says it, it's going to help you and help your pet meet all its nutritional needs and requirements because they need their vitamins, their minerals, the antioxidants, they need their fatty acids. So you've got to know what you're doing. And they're designed for liver patients. And, uh, you know, that's a diet that's reduced in protein and uh, reduced in minerals. And a reduction in minerals will reduce kidney stress and the risk of bladder stones, common condition in dogs with liver shunts. So uh, you've got all that to, you know, to consider. But she says together with a holistic vet and a good pet nutritionist, you can create a really good plan uh, with, with proper supplementation that's balanced, low in protein, it's homemade, and, and that can help your dog live a long, wonderful life despite any liver abnormality. And uh, there's a lot you can do. There's a lot you can do. So I thought it was a great article. I really enjoyed it. You know, like that. no matter what, like no matter what level you're at with your pets, it just seems that everything we talk about leads toward do your research Second guess, double check that, you know, what are the alternatives? What are the things that I can afford to do, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, and here's the thing, you know, we talked about this before. <clears throat> and that is, some people say, well, I can't, I can't afford a full raw diet. Well, go partial. Maybe you can do raw a couple of times a week. You just do what you can with what you're, what's available to you. And, um, and no one's going to knock you for that. No one's going to knock you for that if you don't go full on. And uh, those small changes will make big changes in your pets. So, uh, yeah, try it. Absolutely worth trying. I thought it was a great article. And um, you see how a lot of things are connected with each other. You know, it talks about these um, the, these bladder stones. You know, so what if your dog's got bladder stones, but you haven't made the connection with the liver yet? That could be one key to that. So, um, well, we're going to wrap up with a couple of things. I, I follow. I want to recommend a couple of really great Facebook pages that I follow, and I love them, and I think you will love them. One of them is BBC Spring Watch. Yeah, it's just all nature articles, nature videos. It's just fantastic. The other day, they posted a simple video of the red uh, robin. The American red, robin. No, red robin, red breast. The American red robin. The English r- red robin, red Different breast. bird. English red robin. It's yes, it's English. <laughs> different bird altogether. It's like English. Yeah. Americans have different robins. Uh, but our robins have a really red breast. Yours and our don't. robins are orange. Yeah, ours are, I mean, like super red breast. Gorgeous, gorgeous little birds. Uh, the type and of birds you don't eat at red robin. No, because I nearly choked and died at a red robin. <laughs> That's no lie. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. We're going to be talking about jolly nature and robin redbreasts. And the robin redbreast is, is very, is what the kind of bird you see a lot on Christmas cards, English Christmas cards. Beautiful little birds. And all they posted was a video of the birds singing. And it was the most relaxing and just fabulous <laughs> nature video I've ever seen. But they do uh, post a lot of really great stuff. And it's actually a TV show back in England. But I don't know if you can get it here in the States. I'm not sure. But you can definitely go on their Facebook page. Now, my other recommended page is 
And you've heard me talk about this place over and over again. I love Chatsworth. Chatsworth House, my favorite place in the whole world. It's where Jim and I renewed our wedding vows. It's the most amazing stately home. Tra la la, tra la la. <laughs> the 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 the, the uh, sprawling estate is just phenomenal. I mean, they've got cows and sheep. You name it, they've got it. Well, anyway, they have a photographer. His name is called Villager Jim. That's his name, Villager oh. Jim. I like to be Villager Jim. He happens to be my friend's uncle. He happens oh. to be Tracy King, which we call Tracy Kong, by the way. Uh, he happens to be Tracy Kong's uncle. Wow. And does so he live in a, in um, one of those houses on the edge of the estate? I think he does. I think he lives in the village. That's and he's, awesome. he's dubbed the Banksy of, of the photographic world by national newspapers, as nobody knows he, who he actually is. I've never seen him. I don't know his last name. I do know he's my friend's uncle. I never met him. So you never see him in the photos. He's very witty. But he photographs all the wildlife at Chatsworth. And it's... Un- That's a good job. Oh, I can't tell you how stunning his photography is. And funny. And he captures these moments. And he knows all these animals. He knows them all. He's given them names. I mean, it is brilliant. So you can find him at Villager Jim on Facebook. He does have uh, a, a website, villagergym.com, and you can actually buy all of his works, and they're fantastic. The ones that he takes, and it's early in the morning, and there's the mist, and then the stags and deers, and uh, I can't even begin to tell you how incredibly gorgeous it is. But I think you'll really enjoy Villager Jim's page and BBC Spring Watch page. So hop on over there. You'll see great pictures and videos of nature. Because you know what, Jim? What's in nature? You love nature, don't you? There's perfection in nature. There's nothing imperfect about nature. Nothing. So on that note, I want to say a big thank you for tuning into the show today. Love it when you come and tune into the live show. It makes me so happy. And of course, if you don't get time to actually listen to the live show, and you can listen anywhere in the world, not just the States, we have a worldwide audience, then just find us on iTunes. Really, really easy. Well, remember, you can help an animal in need. Either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, or share their information. Rescue your next family member. Replace the word shop with adopt. And be kind to all animals. Thank you, Jim, for pushing the buttons today. No problem. It's a wonderful thing. Get a little rusty after a couple weeks. I know. He's been gone and left me by myself to push the buttons. It's not right. A couple weeks. (laughs) And uh, you've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, where it's all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And always kiss your pets. Good morning and good night. And I'll see you next time. You've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Visit Vegas Rock Dog Radio for more information. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And subscribe on iTunes and iHeartRadio. And remember, give your fur babies a big kiss from me, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. You must not rely on the information in this broadcast from our host as an alternative to medical advice from your veterinarian. If you have any specific questions about a medical matter regarding your pets, you should consult your veterinarian or specialist.